Saudi Cup and welcome to another episode here for the Fungal Pod, Mindful Media and Communication. And you see me, if you're watching this as a video podcast, you see me smiling because I had the opportunity, I have the opportunity and I found a way to connect two things I'm really into. Of course, one is media studies and we talk about this twice a week anyways, but now also one of the my childhood hobbies, childhood, I know, affections, so to speak, wrestling, professional wrestling. That's why this episode is called From Kayfabe to Clickbait, How Media Shapes the Squared Circle. So, hey, if you're a wrestling fan, welcome. If you're a media student fanatic, also welcome. And so, you know, there's lots of buzz always around when it comes to wrestling, if you're into wrestling, be like different wrestling promotions. I'm not trying to pick on one or the other in this, in this episode. I'll try to highlight the strength of all of those related to some media studies or media theories. Okay. Whether you're a WWE fan and WrestleMania is the best thing ever or you're an AW fan, you're like, all in is so much better. And don't worry. I got you covered. Um, I'm here to break down the fascinating world of professional wrestling through the lens of communication theories. Yeah. So we talk about cafe, multi, multi-platform storytelling, fan culture, all of it with diving, suicide, diving into all of it. So tighten your ropes and let's get ready to rumble. So if you look at the legacy of, of wrestling, all right, and here we have to look into like WWE, but other promotions doing the same thing, of course, but WWE has just been around for longer than all the other big ones. I know large history, WWF, WWF, and whatnot. So yeah, but we're not going to be like wrestling nerds too much. We're going to look into like media theories here. Okay. So storytelling is of course like one theory that's incredibly important when it comes to professional wrestling. And WWE as well as AW, I think, are masters of storytelling if they want to. And we call this the narrative paradigm. It is theory of the narrative paradigm suggests that storytelling is hardwired into human communication. And WWE brings this to life with like super epic characters like Stone Cold uh, Steve Austin, how he rebels against Vince McMahon, for example, right? It's one of the all-time great feuds. And I know the emotionally, like if you're if you're as old as I, I am, you, you remember like the Hart family saga, for example, with Owen Hart, oh, rest in peace, Brett the Hitman Hart, and it's just fantastic. If you're like a younger fan and you just started following, of course, the bloodline is like fantastic storytelling, all right? John Cena, the blood. <laughs> if you look into AW, MJF and my uh, and, and Michael, Adam Cole right now. Better than you, baby. Fantastic storytelling. And so storytelling is very captivating because it's hardwired into human communication. We've been telling stories ever since the Stone Age. People drawing stuff on walls because they're storytellers. Okay. So over decades for WWE, wrestling in general has evolved into like this unique blend of theater and combat like every match every promo serves as a chapter in the larger narrative they're blending reality and the art of kayfabe into like a seamless spectacle like for those non-wrestling aficionados kayfabe is like staying in character and not breaking character yeah, the, the wrestling ring isn't just a sports arena it's like how I, I'm going to see this from WWE. It's the grandest stage of them all. It was what they call WrestleMania. So it's not just a sports arena. It's like a stage for this grand narratives, those crazy stories. Okay. And the storytelling extends way beyond the ring, the squared circle, how they call the ring, right? Social media platforms, X, IG, whatever, are often used to extend those storylines. Of course, they offer like, behind the scenes glimpses and and amplify 
like fan engagements, this example up, up, down, down from the new day, right? The tag team from WWE that has like some behind the scenes stuff. They're gamers, so they're always playing games. And then sometimes they get attacked and whatnot. It furthers the narrative, which is great. Yeah. So wrestling promotions, they have to reinvent their media presence. And here you can see that convergence culture theory um, is a very important part. Yeah, wrestling is not just confined to your TV screen. Yeah, the narrative universe, as discussed right now, extends to, to YouTube, podcasts, the WWE Network, for example. Right. So the aim here is to engage fans on multiple levels. Yeah, from TV viewership to interactive online polls, X hashtag campaigns during events such as WrestleMania, All In, and so on. Even, even fan-generated content, right? In essence, WWE, AW, they have succeeded in making fans not just consumers, but contributors as well to their converging media empire, which is just incredibly smart because if the fans create content for you, you don't have to. I mean, you don't have to create as much content, right? You, you just get content for free from the fans. It's, it's smart, it's so smart to get fans involved. Awesome. Okay. And I think that's also one thing that's where now AW, for example, shines. Right? When we, when we talk about the impact of like narrative, what we had before, but then complexity. Yeah, so AW a rather new promotion, founded I think in 2018, so it's around five years old, um, all elite wrestling. And I think Usually, I mean, now you can argue it's not that much of a difference anymore, but in the, especially in the beginning, they, they, they were thriving on the narrative complexity and nuance, I believe. And, but now the, with the Bloodline story, for example, WWE does a very similar thing with the New Day up, up, down, down, very, very similar thing. So, uh, yeah, no matter if AW, WWE, I think we see that postmodern theory is very well at work here. Like with storylines, they often blur the boundaries of kayfabe. And reality. So sometimes the wrestlers, for example, they refer to themselves by their real names. Right? It's like, hey, this is not Roman Reigns talking. This is Joe talking or something like this. Or CM Punk used to say that this is not CM Punk. This is Phil talking to Paul, uh, things like this. Right? So then they, they're blurring the boundaries of what's fake, what's real. Do they really mean it? Huh. And that's postmodernism. You don't know what is fake, what is real, leads to hyper reality. Okay. So as an example, and he's still active. Like take take the Enigma, the the Odd Joe, one of the greats of all time, Chris Jericho. His real life persona is a is a somewhat of a rock star, and it, that, that merges into his wrestling character, right? So in this case, for example, AW demands more from the audience. It asks them to engage critically and untangle these these intricate narratives. Like it, it makes the viewing experience much more interactive. And mentally stimulating. Like, for example, with, on this example of Chris Jericho, right? I mean, his rock band played his theme song, right? So you kind of expect the audience to understand that this song is played by Jericho's band and sung by himself, like Judas, right? The, 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 the song. And the audience understands, connects with it, and sings it every time. Even when Jericho became a bad guy, a villain, a heel, they would still sing that song because they just liked it that much. It was fantastic. So the community engagement, just fantastic. And I mean, speaking of community engagement behind the scenes and so on, I mean, AEW struck gold back then already with like the YouTube channel by the Young Bucks and all of their friends from the elite, being the elite, right? D. If you watch it, the, the soundtrack was like D, elite, D, D, elite. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, and it was just fantastic. It, 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 the whole being the elite channel, right? From my point of view, it's just like a crash course just in, in cultural study theory. It's not just a platform for like additional content. It creates and sustains a community. It has its own norms, memes, inside jokes. It's fantastic. I mean, and they call it being the elite. And then one of the moves in the ring is the BTE being the elite trigger where they then just knee like the Young Bucks is a tag team for those who don't know like um, those two guys and then they have like the, their, their opponent in the middle they hold him by the hands and then they knee him in the face from, from the two different sides that's the BTE trigger right 
So it's a reference to, to, to what they do here, for example. It's fantastic. More and more on this in just a second. All right, let me say it right now and say it later again because I love it so much. What they also do, there's like a wrestling journalist, a very famous wrestling journalist who rates wrestling matches. His name is Dave Meltzer. And so the Young Bucks also have a move in their repertoire, which they call the Meltzer Driver, <laughs> as reference to Dave Meltzer, for example. So they're blurring the lines a lot. And they've been doing this forever. So they're... They expect you, the fan, to not just watch on TV, but to be aware of the surrounding as well, which is just so smart because then you keep the fan involved in that whole universe. So it's fantastic community engagement there. And yeah, AEW, I think, is even more active on this in regards to, to fostering the, the community compared to WWE. But it's also because WWE does lots of interaction too, but it's not... AW still feels a little bit smaller, a little bit more community-like, I believe, while, while WWE is like this huge universe, right? So it's a bit, a bit easier if you're like a little bit smaller there. So yeah, AW responds to fan theories, for example, it incorporates audience input into the storylines. So fans aren't just spectators, they're, they're like co-authors. Now less than maybe five years ago when it all started, but still to some extent. And if you look at like traditional versus new media, right, in, in for, for both promotions, also for Impact, TNT, no, Im, Impact, Impact, Im, let's stick with WWE and AW. So in, in today's like very fragmented media landscape, right, both WWE and AW, they have made it a point to be where the fans are because that's what you have to do, right? You have to align with like media, uh, media systems dependency theory. That's how we call it, okay? So... They, they continue to focus on televised events while leveraging social media at the same time. AW might be a little bit younger than WWE, so they, they have to, they say, okay, we, we can't compete just by ratings war, right? So they also look into like capitalizing um, the, a different online presence, more interactive, for example, to deliver like more more agile storytelling, like more like what do the fans want? Okay, let's switch gears a little bit, for example. And so this this multi-platform approach for both ensures that no matter where you are, right, TV, social media, whatever, you won't miss a moment of the action, the drama, and so on from weekly weekly shows to like those annual extravaganzas, just like WrestleMania or all in in Wembley, for example. And I took it away already just because I got so excited. But let's let's dive into, into the changing phase of wrestling journalism for just a moment. Yeah, once ruled by publications like PWI, which is still around, of course, or still very, very important in air quotes. Um, but the landscape now features, of course, a, a plethora of independent outlets from YouTube channels such as WrestleTalk, follow WrestleTalk, <laughs> or Cultaholic. Um, to, to, to blogs and fan generate content, right? I just hesitated because I just watched a cultaholic video like shortly before I started recording. Actually, I watched Jack the Jopper. Um, so this, uh, this aligns with what we call in media theories the public sphere theory. Okay. So as wrestling journalism has become more democratized, yeah? but with, with that comes the challenges of of maintaining also ethical standards. And again, if you're listening to my podcast regularly, you know I always talk about ethics at least once. Um, because, of course, there's temptation for clickbait, right? Cultaholic, right? <laughs> I love the cultaholic videos. I hate the articles because of the clickbait in there. Uh, but everyone's doing it, I understand, but it's just so annoying. Um, so, yeah, if, if, you, if you're trying to make it in, in that realm, you have to ask yourself, do I provide value? So yes, hopefully everyone provides some form of value, but do I clickbait as well? Do I lure people in? I don't know. That, that's, again, ethics, right? Morals. Do you have them or not? Cultaholic. <laughs> and I'm kidding because I like cultaholic. Uh, but yeah, so without getting too much into to the ethics part now, because I talk about this in every single episode, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop it right here. I'm going to kick out a two before, before we get, or before we get counted out. Um, yeah. The, the, this little, um, little crazy tour of how media theories can help us understand the, shall we call it rich, 
tapestry of pro wrestling. Look at this, making up metaphors on the fly. Um, from the art of kayfabe, right, to the complexities of like multi-platform engagement slash storytelling. Now I want to know what's your take, of course. Like, which concept are the most concepts are the most intriguing for you? Do you not care about this multifaceted storytelling? You just want to see them like chop each other, like maybe you're just the biggest Walt Gunter fan in the world, or I don't know, do you enjoy the BTE stuff, for example? Let me know in the comments or on social media at FunkyPod, email FunkyPod at gmail.com. Like, share, subscribe. If not, I'm going to super kick you, going to invite you to a super kick party. Super kick party, also like a reference to the being the elite, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, ideally also leave a review cost and you can reach a wider audience and we can have like bigger wrestling extravaganzas. Uh, until then, as always, stay safe, take care. Don't forget to click out the tool. We talk soon. Sorry, Cap.